Foster here. Well, today I want to talk about service principal accounts and I'm going to show you how to set up a service principal account that actually allows you in Azure DevOps to talk to your um, Power Platform environment if you have MFA currently configured. In addition to that, you will learn how to set up an application registration and how to set up an application user that ties into that app registration uh, to allow you to connect your Azure DevOps environment all the way over to your uh, Power Platform environment um, for DevOps operations. So um, this is actually a video that was requested by a number of you who have been following all the Azure DevOps uh, playlists that I created. So go back and visit that playlist if you haven't done so in order to, um, to catch up with um, this particular video as it will give you a lot more context than, um, than just following this one. So I will put a link to all these videos down in the comment section or actually in the description section of this video. So please follow up with those and keep hitting that like and subscribe button. So that basically gives me a good idea as to where you guys want me to go with this uh, channel. And um, I appreciate your pat patronage. So thank you so much. And let's see how it's done. Okay, so here I am in my DevOps space and I actually have this current project, ALM Power Apps, open. And um, if you remember from my previous videos, I had actually walked through how to set up this project. So you can actually go back and visit those. Um, you should see the link scrolling across the screen as I speak. So just go ahead and check out those videos. Uh, that will help you with setting up uh, the DevOps environment for your ALM projects. So now from that set of videos, what have uh, transpired is that uh, many of you came back and said, okay, you had promised us to show um, how to set up a service principal connection for your DevOps tasks that um, require a service principal. And that's typically when you're actually using MFA or you have MFA enabled in your environment, you will want to go down that route as opposed to a um, standard connection. So um, here's my ALM Power Apps. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go back here and click on pipelines and make sure I select that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a new pipeline. So if you already have a pipeline, then this is just an extension. I'm just showing you how to get there and, and um, where I picked up from there. So I'm going to use the classic editor here and I'm going to set up a Git, Azure repo Git um, to move forward. Then I'm going to set up an empty job, which is typically what you would do with our power platform anyways. So granted, I already have the power platform build tools installed. So you already know from previous videos how that works. So right here, I'm going to go and click and add a job. And really where a service principal comes into play is if I click here on the search button and I type power, um, any of these tasks that involved having or having to use a, um, a service principal, for example, if I want to create an environment, if I click that particular task and I select the task itself to add the connections, you will see that one of the first things that you need to do is specify how you're going to authenticate against the environment, the power uh, platform environment that hosts all the assets that you want to actually bring into, um, into your DevOps uh, pipeline. So, in this case, what you do here is this username and password is specific to uh, environments that are not using MFA. But if you are using MFA or have some sort of uh, authentication process that is a little bit more sophisticated, then um, you will have to set up a service principal. So in this case, what you will want to do is set up a new service connection. And this remember that the server URL is precisely the location for that environment that you that you want to um, connect to. So what I'm going to do here is I actually have a, an environment called McCorma Development. And if I go to click on this environment right here, you will see that that opens this specific organization right here. So I'm just going to copy out that URL 
and I'm going to paste it over here in my server URL. So that's how I'm going to connect to that um, organization. Now, all this information regarding the authentication, uh, regarding tenant ID, application ID, uh, client secret of the application ID, that's all Azure uh, related. So it stands to reason that you must have a um, an application registration in your Azure portal uh, under your active Azure Active Directory in order to do this. So let's see how we do that part. So heading over here to the portal, I'm going to click on Azure Active Directory. And here on Azure, in Azure Active Directory, I have the um, app registrations option. So here I'm going to set up a new registration and I'm going to call this registration Power Platform um, Registration. So that will allow me to set up an application ID for my environment that I want to connect to and actually use more secure credentials to do that. So I'm going to register this. All I need is a name for now. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually view the API permissions. And the critical aspect here is to ensure that in your permissions, you're granting access to Dynamics uh, CRM. In this case, uh, that's kind of how you are going to recognize or um, outline the environments. They're all on the Dynamics CRM because that's how the typical traditional experience works. There is also an option for Power Apps Runtime Service, but that's very specific and that doesn't apply to the environment. So uh, we're just going to do Dynamics CRM here. Now, um, what we want to do then is grant access to common data service and organization users. And then we add this permission. So now that we've done here, what we want to do is we grant, want to grant admin consent and we're going to click on yes to continue. Okay, awesome. That is done. So now if you go back here uh, to the certificates and secrets for that registration that you just created. So what you're going to do here is you're going to set up your client secrets because if you go back over here to the um, Power Apps uh, pipeline that you're setting up yeah, or the Power Platform pipeline that you're setting up, you will see that um, you require a client secret for the application ID. And by the way, the couple things that I'm going to show you from here is um, how to identify your application ID. So um, I'm going to click here on new client secret and we're going to uh, call this as a uh, matter of practice, what I normally do is I actually look at the environment name and I set up that um, accordingly. So Mekorma uh, development and um, that will we'll call this secret. Okay, and we'll make it valid for a year. We don't need to make it any longer than that. But what is more important here to do is to copy the actual secret itself. So you're going to copy this out to your clipboard and then uh, temporarily paste it in Notepad or any place that you feel that it's necessary for you to maintain that information while you complete your registration. So here's my secret ID. I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to go over here quickly and I'm, I'm going to paste it in the client secret here. Now for the application ID, what you're going to do is you're going to go back to overview and the application ID is precisely this first one. So we're going to copy that out. And we're going to paste it back into our application ID and our tenant ID. That's the actual tenant that I'm uh, registered to. This is my directory of tenant ID. I'm going to copy that out and paste that out over here as well. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is give this a service connection name. So we're going to call this McCormick development for the environment that I'm trying to register to. And um, we're going to hit save here. We can then set up the environment display name. This uh, setting is required. And remember that that you get from the actual environment itself. So if you go back over here to um, the Power Platform Admin Center, your display name is somewhere up here, in this case, McCormick Development. And that's exactly what's being, um, being asked for here. OK. Then you can decide what's the type of environment, if it's a production or whatever. And then you can select all the Dynamics 365 apps. Um, then right here, 
uh, if you have anything that is Dynamics 365 related, you would select that. All right, anyways, that's not the case for us. So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna go ahead because this is not all that's need to be done. So the next thing that you wanna do then is once you've created your environment, once you've actually set up the registration, what you're gonna wanna do is tie that over to your actual environment itself. In order to do that, you gotta go to settings and then you're gonna go to um, your user plus permissions. What you wanna then do is you wanna set up a uh, check on their uh, users. You wanna set up these in Dynamics 365. So that's the only caveat, the only one trick here that, that is kind of quirky. And I'm sure this is gonna be ironed out over time, but you know, that's kind of the quirkiness of that. You kind of gotta go to the Dynamics 365 uh, user setup for that environment. And then from here, what you wanna do is you wanna select application users and you're gonna set up a new application user. So I'm gonna click new here. And um, this will, as luck will have it, you will actually then select from this drop down application user. So that's not quite intuitive as it should be. But then what you're gonna do is you're gonna set up this and you can call this your um, Azure DevOps uh, pipeline um, user. And then the application ID, this is how you type back into, into Azure. So the application ID will come from your Power Platform registration or application registration. So we're just gonna copy this and paste it over here. And the, on the uh, setup screen, let's go back over here because um, that's also hidden from me. Uh, let's go up here and um, let's go back here actually. And then we're gonna type, paste the application ID. The URI, that's not a required field. The Azure object ID, that gets created when you um, sort of save this. So you're gonna see some quirkiness when you try to save this. But then in the first name here, we can call this Azure DevOps. And as last name, we can set pipeline. And then here we're gonna do Azure DevOps pipeline at mccorma.com, which is my domain. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this. And as you said, you would get some quirkiness in the scripting, but then the rest of the stuff is filled out automatically for you after you complete your um, user setup. So that's it. That's in reality all you need to do. Oh, there's one more step actually. So if you save and close this, Okay, and uh, sort of refresh this window. Then um, go back to application users. The next thing that you need to do then is well, you need to select this actually and manage the roles and assign this a specific role within um, your environment. So for example, for this environment, I'm just going to make this a system admin. Not what you should do is this only for explanation purposes. So you choose the role that is adequate for your environment with the minimum amount of security needed to build and connect to build your environment or deploy anything within the environment. And that should actually take care of um, now uh, ensuring that you can build properly um, those deployment pipelines as I showed previously. So that's all for now, folks. If you have any questions, please uh, write those in the comments. Um, you know that I'm always here to, to basically help you with your DevOps um, initiatives. And um, I'm gonna be doing some more videos that will help you through other aspects of this whole thing. For example, branching, uh, those are things that you need to start thinking about when you're running a full DevOps uh, operation, um, certainly automated testing, those kind of things. So uh, hopefully I get to see you soon.